casa. ¿Cuál crees tú que es la característica principal de esta nueva generación de, de guitarristas a la que tú perteneces? Bueno, pues el, en principio todos son fallos de la nueva generación, ¿no? Porque intentamos buscar cosas nuevas, por lo tanto fallamos todos. Toda la prima, ¿no? What's up, YouTube? Ricky T, CFGLA, the Flamenco Guitar Coach. Back at you for another day. <laughs> uh, I used to rap. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I used to be a DJ. A long time ago. Oh, another life. But uh, no, in today's video, we're going to talk about positional keys. We're going we're to define a positional key and we're going to clarify, clarify for you so you can use it, so you can boom, get this knowledge, so you can start to apply, so you can understand, so you can be better. All right, let's be better. Let's get better together. Um, so let's dive in. Uh, business as usual. You see, we have this nice spreadsheet here. Um, rather than having a guitar in the hand, I'm going to show you here. Uh, gives us more of a you know school-like feel. Uh, so boom, let's 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 go ahead and start talking. So, what is a positional key? At a very high level, simply put, positional key is you take one key, you take one group of chords, right? And you move them anywhere on the fretboard and you will, and you and you refer to it as that same key. Right? Positional key is even even though it's a real even though it's a different real key. What do you mean? Say more about that. So that's the basic. Let me repeat it. You take a group of of, of chords from a uh, from an actual key. Take one chord, let's say D minor, because we're talking about por medio. We take our D minor. This is D minor, por medio. So if I tell you por medio is D minor, and I play por medio open, boom, you, you, this is really D minor. The real key is also D minor. Positional key is D minor, real key is D minor, right? The positional key will be referred to as por medio. That's the slang that we use. And but the real key is D minor here, right? Um, so positional key now. Now what happens if we take this same shape, the same chord, and we put it up here? Actually here. Right? So let's say we now put this here. Let's say we put a capo on the fourth, uh, and we put this here, right? So you know there's a capo here. All right, let's just say that there, there, there's a capo on the fourth. There's a capo on the fourth, and this is that same chord that we just played open. But now we have it here on the fourth. So I'm still going to be playing por medio, positional key, por medio. I'm thinking of it, oh, D minor, this, that, and the other. At CFG, when we talk about, when we go through chords, when we start talking about pieces, um, if we ever put the capo somewhere else, we're going to still, we're, you know, when we play por medio, we're going to still call this chord D minor. Even though we know that's not the real chord. The real chord is F sharp minor. Okay? So here, the positional key, D minor, por medio. But the real key is F sharp minor. All right? And this is important because it makes it so much easier. It makes life so much easier. Because now you don't have to worry yourself or trouble yourself with Asking what is this real key, and then and then let's say that you know the cadence: first minor, flat seven, flat six, fifth seven, flat nine. The basic cadence, basic four chords. Let's say you know those, and now you know I tell you, okay, we're in F sharp minor. Name the cadence. Boom, go. When you're first starting off, you you might not be able to do that, but very very quickly you you will be able to do that, right? It's not 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 difficult at all. We'll go through that at CFG. We teach. We teach to get you there because it's it's not difficult. It's just a matter of it having it clearly explained to you. But again, you you don't have to go through the trouble, even when you're playing. You don't have to go through the trouble of thinking, oh man, F sharp minor. So then, flat seven is E major and flat six is D major. So then the fifth seven flat nine would be C sharp seven flat nine. No, if you know por medio, then you know the positions. Right. Remember, one of our competitive advantages in guitar is that we can have chord shapes. So we just need to know chord shapes. So the positional keys allow you to take these chord shapes, 
put a capo somewhere on the fretboard and then use those same chord shapes and you're playing in, in that key effectively without having to change to think about theory and, and, and change things in your mind. You just know automatically, boom, you're going to play the, the one minor. Again, if there's a capo here, boom, you're going to play the one minor. Just like how we have it here with the chords, you're going to still play these chords. Except for a zero now is just, that's just where the capo is going to be now, right? So that makes it so much easier because now you can play up and down the fretboard. You can play so many different pieces, right? Paco plays a lot with 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 the capo at three, right? Choruelo, um, Rio de la Miel, right? A lot of pieces, a lot of great pieces with the capo at three. Um, another important, important thing, um, and this actually also relates to why por medio is very important to learn because it's no secret, flamenco, who's the singer? If I was the best singer in flamenco, you go, you ask 10 people who know flamenco or who like flamenco, who's the best singer? Probably about nine of them are, at least nine of them are going to say, Camarón de la Isla, right? Camarón learn from other guys and blah, blah, blah. There's, and there are other great singers. I don't, we're not, we don't put people down over here. I'm not putting anyone down, okay? But... Everybody's going to say, come on, hands down. So because he was the best singer, everybody copies come on. They sing his lyrics. They, they, they sing like him. They use his runs. They use his intonation. They sing like him. And a lot of them, when they're learning how to sing, they want to sing in his key. His key. What, what do you mean his key, Ricky? His key. Most of his pieces, his range, his vocal range is between F minor and G minor. That's the, the lion's share of his pieces are in between those keys, F minor and G minor. And we can get fancy and play F minor, you know, the true F minor and play it differently. We can get nice and beautiful and do all that stuff. Yeah, that's later on. For now, stick to por medio, put, use the capo and master por medio. Because then when you go to the other ones, it'll be cake. It'll be easy. But getting back to it, everybody wants to play in that range. That also means that a lot of the flamenco pieces are in that range. And most flamenco songs, I'll say it again, are played por medio, are or can be played por medio. Most of them are por medio because it's the easiest one to play, right? Um, so there you have it. Like it's, 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 it's very helpful to learn this position of what to play. Uh, it's it's, 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 extremely helpful. And so, you know, just to walk through it again, this will be your D minor still. We'll refer to it as D minor. Now, if you're playing with somebody else with another musician, let's say this musician has a different instrument, or if you're playing with someone who doesn't understand flamenco or doesn't study or hasn't studied it and that maybe doesn't know about positional keys and doesn't understand this and they haven't watched our video or whatever, you'd have to tell that person the real key. So you'd say, okay, well, you know, and if you didn't know it sh straight away, you could work it out, right? You know, this is the root, this is D. You remember from the, the simple way that we're explaining things, E and F and B and C, close, close to each other. Everything else has a sharp or a flat in between it, a sharp end or a sharp or a flat in between it. So D, that's gonna be D sharp or E flat, and then E, F, E, and F next to each other. So we go to F. Then when we go to F sharp. So you know that if this is your your the, the root of, of your chord, and you can work it out, okay, I have to keep it at four, so really it's F sharp. So we're playing F sharp minor. So you tell to somebody, you know, you tell you tell someone, you know, this is F sharp minor, right? You and then boom, you know, it's it's you're you're good to go. Um so that's how it works, right? Um F sharp minor, and then the fifth of of, um, of F sharp. Uh, so these are your notes. These are your real notes. So if you're talking to somebody, you tell them I'm playing. Are you playing with someone of different chord, different instrument? Playing F sharp minor, beautiful. Uh, and then they can play with you. You just put put the capo at four, and they and they're doing that. Or here's another one. Let's say you want to play a piece. And we're with somebody else. Let's put it, let's flip it the other way. Instead of you telling them, let's play in this key, they tell you, let's play, because this is actually how it's working, how it, how it, how I've used it, because 
I learned from flamenco. I, I learned, you know, I, I learned this method first and I learned my theory like this. And, and, and then I was able to then let's play all the Western music that I like or play with somebody else from here. Like, that, oh, they know how to play this music. Or blah, blah, blah. Let's play this, this key or let's, let's, let's play this piece in this key. So you go play with somebody else and they're like, oh, this song is is in um, B minor or let me make it easy. This song is in um, E minor. Right. You're like, oh, it's E minor. And let's say you've only been studying with us. You don't know any other music theory, but you're pounding on por medio. You're getting good at por medio. You know the scales you can play with it. You, you know the chords around it. You know more than just the normal cadence or you even know only just the cadence. But you can maneuver from por medio. That's your point of reference. But this person wants to play E minor or you got your family around or you just want to sit down and play a piece that's in E minor. How are you going to do that if you just study with us and you don't, you know, study, let's say classically, um, or I can classically I'm teach you all that, or, you know, you don't study formally. How are you going to play? Well, I think you probably already know. You're going to use your positional key. You're going to use this. You're going to apply this. So if the key is E minor, you're going to take this D and you're going to say, where's the E? Here. Oh, oh I can just put my capo on two and play por medio. And then my real key would be E minor, right? So you take this, put her here, and then voila, we're playing an E minor, right? We're playing an E minor. We got G, we got B, we got E, here we got F, and here we got B again, right? So. These are the real notes, but now you can play with that person. Put the kick boy too. You play por medio. You're playing E minor. Beautiful. So, position keys are very useful. They 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 will allow you to play in different keys by just knowing one key. That's the secret. You can play in different keys if you only know one positional key. Right? The voicings will, will be different. Okay, that's true because you're going to be on different place of the, of the, of the fretboard, right? But it's going to be the same chord. And if anything, if they're playing, you know, let's say um, in, in E minor and they're playing E minor open and you're playing E minor, but you're playing por, por medio with, with the capo at two, you're going to, you're going to make that person, you guys are going to sound better. You're going to compliment each other because your chords are going to have different voicings than their chords. Their chords are, are going to have different voicings than your chords. So it's going to complement, but you're going to be saying, playing the same notes. It's going to sound beautiful. Uh, you get a lot of texture, a lot of color in those sounds. So again, this video doesn't have to be too long. I just wanted to explain what a positional key is. All right. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, ask any questions. Uh, in the comment section, I will do my best to reply to everything. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. This has been Ricky T, CFGLA, your flamenco guitar coach. Um, see you next time. Awesome.